Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at another M.2 cooler, again from Thermalright. They seem to be absolutely nailing this in terms of pricing, availability, and also in terms of different designs. So, today we're going to be taking a look at the HR09 2280. So, this is designed for M.2 drives which match up to the 2280 form factor. So, basically, that's kind of the normal ones, the full size drives that you see everywhere these days. And with them getting faster and faster and memory speeds warming up, controllers warming up, you may well find yourself needing or wanting one of these little coolers. Actually, they're pretty good. And essentially for the very cheap price, which at the moment here in the UK is somewhere in around the sort of £10 mark, 10 11 £12, depending where you're shopping, of course, as always, we'll put some affiliate links in the video description so you can check out your local pricing. I think these actually are a very good idea. A lot of motherboards these days come with very substandard coolers. Yes, they look fine and were probably designed for the lower speed PCI Express Gen 4 drives or even the older PCI Express Gen 3 drives, which generally don't tend to generate a lot of heat. But if you're buying newer, more modern drives, they've got higher speeds, higher frequencies, and they generate more heat. And as we all know, when it comes to basically anything electrical, as they generate heat, it reduces the lifespan. So if you want to have a little bit of an investment to protect your device and also hopefully make it last a little bit longer, yeah, I think these are a pretty good idea. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at the HR09, also show how easy it is to install. I'm going to show you some benchmarks and temperatures, and then you can decide whether or not this is going to be right for you. So starting off with the package, as you can see, it's uh, pretty usual stuff from Thermalrite. So this is the HR9 2280, a premium M.2 SSD heatsink, and this one is available in multiple colours. This is what they call grey, but I would probably call it silver but there's also a black version as well, should you wish to. Or if you want something a little bit bigger, they do a pro version, which actually has two heat pipes. This one actually only comes with one. So if you want something a little bit bigger, then you can certainly do that. Although I think the HR9 Pro is almost double the height as well. So potentially you might find some issues with compatibility with air coolers on your CPU potentially. So do definitely bear that in mind. This particular device is roughly the same sort of size as an M.2 drive anyway. So it's only gonna take up the same physical space as an M.2, obviously with that added third dimension heading out inside of the case. On the back of the box, it just says more of the same thing. So it's got double-sided SSD cooling. So if you have a drive with chips on both sides, this is gonna be fine. Also, it's a fully soldered heat sink, so better heat transfer and also it's got an AGHP heat pipe and also contains premium thermal pads. So looking at the actual cooler itself, it's a pretty neat little device and again, very easy to use and very easy to install. As you can see, you've got the single heat pipe, which is in a U shape, which takes the heat from the SSD up through the heat pipe and out towards the outer sections of the heat fins. It's actually been made very nicely. The fins themselves are actually very strong. They're not the sort of ones which bend as soon as you look at them, which is good for aesthetic purposes. And again, very small. I'll put the dimensions on the screen for you so you can see exactly how big it is. When it comes to actually installing it, it's very simple. There's basically four screws, two on each side, undo them, put your drive in, stick it on your motherboard, and you're pretty much done. So let's go ahead and show you how that's done. So starting off with installation on our motherboard here, I'm actually gonna leave the primary one intact because that's actually quite a decent, it's a decent chunk on this particular motherboard. But the one at the bottom here is just a very basic flat piece of metal. So we're gonna remove that first of all. So just undo the screws on top of the heatsink as you would do normally for pretty much any motherboard or device. When those are loosened, you can remove this actually from the motherboard and that will reveal the M.2 slots. Something to bear in mind as well whilst you're doing this is the orientation of your drive. So this drive just pushes in and normally you just push that down. Put the clasp over and that locks the drive into place. We don't want to lock it in just yet because we need to actually put that inside of the M.2 cooler. So with the actual cooler itself, you've got four screws. So let's just take those out. Two on this side. And on the other side, we've got the same again, just another two screws. Unfortunately, this device doesn't come with a screwdriver in the packaging, so you will have to provide your own, which is a slightly unusual thing. Thermal right generally tends to include all the tools you need straight out of the box. So when that's loosened off, you can then remove this bottom plate, and you'll see we have on the bottom some thermal pads, and they've got a protective strip, so make sure you remove those. So let's pull that one off first of all, 
And for the bottom section, you've also got a foam pad. So if you've got a single sided drive, you can potentially use the foam pad if you wanted to. Or if you've got a double sided drive, you can remove the protection on the bottom there. I'm gonna remove it anyway. The drive I've got, I believe is a single sided drive, but let's have a quick look. And yes, this is a single sided drive. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is to essentially just plonk this into the caddy, just giving a little bit of the M.2 connection at the top there, just poking out. So hopefully you can see that. So you've got a little bit of overhang on both ends. If you want to, you can be like super precise about it and kind of get it completely balanced. That choice is up to you, although you will find the drive will kind of stick to the pad a little bit. So it might need a little bit of persuasion to come back out. So if you want to readjust it, you can do pretty easily. So that is the drive installed into the bottom section. So now all we need to do is to put the two halves back together. Now again, thinking about our drive orientation on our motherboard, the M.2 tags go into the slot on the side it is here shown. So because the actual M.2 heatsink actually has a logo on it, you may want to orientate that so it's facing the right direction. You can put it either way, it doesn't make any difference in terms of cooling performance, but obviously the logo is gonna look a little bit odd. So you might want to uh, think about that whilst you're putting the drive in. So the next thing to do is just to line up the screw holes on the sides with the screw holes actually on the device itself. And you should see it line up quite nicely on both sides. So now all we need to do is to put the screws back in and make sure they're nice and tight. Whilst you're doing the screws up, you can apply a little bit of pressure and kind of squeeze the bottom plate towards the top plate just to make sure that it's making a good connection between the thermal pads and the drive itself. And if you apply a decent amount of pressure here, the pads will stick together much nicer and you'll get a better thermal transfer. And there we go, that is the final screw installed. And it should end up looking a little something like this. So now let's get the motherboard back and we'll install the M.2 drive onto the motherboard. So this part isn't exactly rocket science. So obviously M.2 section is here. So obviously the section with the pins is gonna to wanna to go in there. So just get it onto like a slight incline angle and it should wiggle into the actual location. Then you can drop the other side down and then all you need to do is just push it into place and latch your drive in. This one's got a secure latch. Your drive may require a screw. If it does, obviously you just put a screw into that threaded section, or you may have one which actually has a quick release. Whichever way you do it is absolutely fine. But there you go, that is the device installed on the motherboard. As you can see, it doesn't take up much more room than the actual M.2 device itself. Very slight overhang on the M.2 end. Again, you can adjust that slightly by loosening the screws and moving it one side or the other. So there you go, that is how to install it. So now let's take a look at some of the results. So now let's take a look at some of the temperature and speed results. Now I will say there has been some Windows updates. Obviously there's been a lot going on very recently with the M.2 controllers. Um, certain manufacturer is having problems. Potentially it's a Windows update thing. We still really don't know 100%. It looks like it possibly is a kind of beta firmware on some drives, but anyway, regardless, I've got some results. Let's check them out. So we look at the performance at the moment. So we've got on the left-hand side, you've got the standard heatsink on my system. Then in the middle, we've got the HR9. And on the far side, we've got the HR10 Pro, which has a fan included. So as you can see, in terms of the speeds, there has been a little bit of a drop off, it seems, in read and write speeds in some instances. Again, that could be down to the slightly different configuration, but it's still within kind of tolerances and certainly it hasn't become a great deal worse. So that is obviously a good thing. I wish I could have gone ahead and tested all of them again, but unfortunately that wasn't entirely possible for this video. So take those with a significant pinch of salt. But when it comes to the temperatures, I think you can see where we're at with this. So at the bottom, we've got the idle figures or just windows on tick over just after it's booted up. And at the top, we've got under load after running crystal disc for about 15 to 20 minutes. So there was a slightly strange anomaly where the standard heatsink on the motherboard actually come in with a very low temperature. I think that is an anomaly. I have retested that and it is generally kind of in the, the mid to high 30s. So certainly in this instance, yeah, it's done better. What we're more concerned about is actually how much heat it holds onto. 
So as we can see with the test previously, we were getting up to about 72 degrees Celsius, which is actually pretty toasty. With the HR9, we've dropped that by 10 degrees, down to 62 degrees Celsius. This is in a room, which is about 24 degrees Celsius overall, so take that into account. If your room is slightly warmer, then you may get slightly warmer temperatures. Generally inside of a PC case, if the cooling isn't changed, the results are going to be the same because it's an enclosed case. Obviously, it's still not done quite as well as the HR10 Pro with its built-in fan, which come in about three degrees different. Now, I would say due to the added complexity of the installation, due to having a PWM fan actually on it, I'm trying to find somewhere to hook it up, for the difference of about three degrees, personally, I think the HR9 is actually the way to go. You've got basically the same performance in terms of cooling, but you've got a lot less hassle and also potentially you'll save yourself a few quid in the process. So overall, I've got to say I'm pretty happy. And again, because we're testing more and more drives, which are becoming faster and faster, faster speeds, generating heat, it is always a concern that these drives, again, because I'm benchmarking them quite a lot, I don't want to necessarily degrade them prematurely by running benchmarks. And for those of you that are just playing games or whatever it is you do with your system, maybe you're video editing, that is quite a stressful thing to do on your drives and also games with things like faster loading times, etc., etc. your drives are gonna be warming up. And I would strongly suggest downloading a program such as Hardware Monitor or Hardware Info. Just take a look at your M.2 drives and see what temperatures they're getting to. I think you might be a little bit surprised how warm some of these modern drives actually get. And in fact, let me know what drive you've got and the temperatures that you're getting in the comments section below. It's always nice to see those kinds of results, see what other people are actually getting. But overall, I think this from Thermalright, again, they've knocked it out of the park. It's a great little device, very easy to install, quite handy, can potentially enhance the lifespan of your drives. And for the sake of around about a tenner here in the UK, I think it's well worth getting. But let me know what you think in the comments section. I think that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.